Hi, and thanks for watching this, uh, this video with us today. How many of you need a miracle in your life? You need an intervention from the Almighty God. You know, I'm a miracle standing before you today, and I'll tell you more about that uh, in a few moments. But you know, there are, there are times in our lives when we need a miracle. We need a miracle in our bodies or in our minds, in our families, in our marriages. And a miracle is the supernatural intervention of God. He comes on the scene and with his mighty power through the Holy Spirit, he performs a miracle for us. And so I'm just asking you today, if you're tuning in, this is your day for a miracle. This is your day that God is going to step in to that situation and give and perform a miracle just for you. Hallelujah. My name is Sherry White, and we're coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International. Our home base is in Athens, Georgia. You know, we are, we are just grateful for all of our viewers and all of the wonderful comments that you make. It's very encouraging uh, that we can go forward uh, in the name of the Lord. And we pray for each one of you uh, that you will be blessed by this um, Word of God that's going to come forth today uh, and that you will believe and receive for God is working miracles today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for every listener, every person who is viewing this video, Lord, that you will just saturate them with your presence today, that you will come into their situation, that you will come into their body, that you will come into their mind, and that you will perform miracles today for your people. And I ask you this in Jesus' name, and I believe and receive in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I want to start in Acts chapter 19, because later in the program, we're going to anoint some handkerchiefs. And I wanted to give you a background or a foundation for these handkerchiefs. And if you would like to have one of these anointed handkerchiefs, uh, all you have to do is write to us at our box number, and I'll give that to you later in the program. And you can write to us, and we will be glad to send you one of these anointed handkerchiefs. You know, we have sent handkerchiefs around the world, and, and God, you know, this is not magic. This is not hocus pocus. This is from the scripture, and God's power and anointing is going to go into these handkerchiefs, and you're going to see your healing, your miracle when you receive one of these. They do not cost anything. They're free. Freely we have been given, and, fr and freely we give. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. I'm going to start in verse 11. And it says, And God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Isn't that wonderful? That God uses men and women today to do his work. Hallelujah. You know, this happened to me about 20 years ago. Uh, the Lord woke me up. Um, it was in the middle of the morning. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. And I felt a mighty presence around me. And I heard a voice. And the voice said, raise your right hand. And so I raised my right hand. And I felt a presence go into my hand. And the what I heard the Lord say to me is that by this hand, you will do miracles and healings in my name. You know, and I believe that. I received that. It was an experience with, with the Lord. And there have been many healed and delivered and set free from evil spirits. And miracles have, have occurred. 
uh, through uh, the working of God through this ministry. Hallelujah. And so if you will believe that, you know, as I lay hands on, on these handkerchiefs uh, in just a few moments, you know, I'm going to, the, it's the power of God that's going to go into these handkerchiefs. Just like it says here, and God worked special miracles by the hands of Paul. And I believe that. And I believe that he uses this hand, his energy comes out of this hand into these handkerchiefs, and the anointing is what breaks the yoke, is what destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. So if you have cancer today, and you put this handkerchief upon your that place where the, they have diagnosed you with cancer, I am believing for that cancer to have to die. It has to die and leave your body in Jesus' name. If you've been having migraine headaches, you can lay this, this handkerchief on your pillow or on the on your on your head, on top of your head, and the headaches will go in Jesus' name. I truly believe that. Hallelujah. Well, let's go on. We've said that a miracle is a supernatural intervention of God. You know, we know about the burning bush and Moses. You know, that was a miracle. Uh, a bush is just burning and, and not being consumed. Uh, you know, that's the hand of God right there. We know about the Red Sea party. Uh, right, oh, thank you, Jesus. And, and the Israelites went uh, over on dry land, and then God brought it back again, and all the Egyptians were, and their chariots and their horses were destroyed. Uh, this, those are miracles. Those are miracles that we find in the Old Testament. You know, there's other uh, miracles that we could go to in, in the Old Testament. Uh, the, the leper who came and, and said that he wanted to be healed, and, and Naaman the leper, and um, I believe it was uh, Elisha that told him to go um, to uh, uh, the, the river Jordan, which was a muddy river, uh, go to the river. Elisha. It was Elisha, uh, and Elisha just spoke, tell him to go and dip himself in the river seven times and he'll be free of that leprosy. And praise God, that is exactly what happened after he became obedient and got over being prideful and angry. He went to the river and he dipped himself seven times and he came uh, out of that river with no leprosy. He was totally delivered and that was a miracle. That was a miracle. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Jesus uh, raised the dead. You know, when God's intervention is in something that cannot be done any other way, any other way, he raised the dead. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the woman uh, that ministered uh, to, uh, let's just go to 2 Kings. I'm going to. Uh, I want you to put your eyes on, on this scripture. 2 Kings chapter 4. This is Elisha. And we know about the, I mean, there's so many miracles in this in this one chapter right here where he tells the woman to go and borrow the pots and 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 the oil did not uh, diminish and the meal did not diminish and she was able to pay off her debts, hallelujah. And it says, and the oil stayed uh, in verse 7. Uh, then she came and told the man of God and said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. And that's exactly what she did. But then she also had a son. She, uh, she was um, barren, and she um, got pregnant and, and had a son. And, and it says here that the son died. He, he had a sunstroke, and um, the son died. And so she came to the prophet of God, and, and she said, you know, um, this has happened, and... Uh, in verse 32, and when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. In verse 33, 
He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them and prayed unto the Lord. Now, the first point that I want to make, if you need a miracle today, is to, to hear the voice of the Lord. When ask the Lord to speak to you about your situation, and then whatever he says to you, do it. And then uh, Elisha the prophet uh, went and, and prayed unto the Lord. Do you think that the Lord gave him instructions on what to do to bring this young boy back to life and, and to, to, for God to intervene with a miracle? Uh, yes, I, I truly believe that when e Elisha prayed, he heard from the Lord. And then the very next verse, he went up and laid himself upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And in verse 36, and he called Gehazi, his servant, and said, Call this Shumanite. So he called her, and when she was come into him, he said, Take up your son. Now that's a miracle. God intervened in this child's life and brought him back to life. You know, my youngest son, Travis, who lives in Austin, Texas, when he was about 14 months old, he drowned in a swimming pool. I turned around and there he was underneath the water and he was, had already turned blue. You know, I, I took him in my arms and they had already called the paramedics and you could hear the sirens going off and they were coming and, and I took my son in my, in my arms and I put him against my heart and what I heard the Lord say to me Remember, this is our first point. Know the voice of the Lord. I heard the voice of the Lord said, uh, Begin to pray unto me. And I began to pray in my prayer language. I began to pray in tongues. And, and all of a sudden, I felt the energy and life of God. God was there. God was working a miracle in my youngest son, bringing him back to life, just like this scripture right here. And he began to, I, I could feel down in his little toes, and, he, and, and I could feel the energy of God moving through his body, and all of a sudden it came into his brain, into his, his face, and he began to spit out water. And, and, and those that were standing around were standing around in, in awe and surprise, and they were shocked. You know, and but this is the power of God. He does miracles for us. We only have to believe and receive. Hallelujah. Knowing the voice of the, the Lord. I believe that the prophet of God who brought back this young son for this woman was hearing from God. And God was telling him exactly what to do. And you cannot just do uh, the same thing all over again. We must hear from God. And know that this is the way that our miracle is going to come. See, Naaman, in the river Jordan, when he came to the prophet of God, he thought that the prophet of God was going to come out and wave his arms and say something uh, spectacular or dramatic. You know, he had a certain way in his thinking, God is going to do this miracle for me this way. But we must hear what God says about it. And then we follow those instructions. Now let's turn to Genesis chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. You know, this is when Moses has brought the children of Israel out of bondage, and now the Egyptians are chasing them. And in chapter 14, verse 15 and 16, and the Lord said unto Moses, The Lord spoke something, and Moses heard what the Lord spoke. Wherefore Christ unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. 
but lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Moses heard from God. And when Moses heard from God, he went and he stood at the edge of the Red Sea. You know, this is, this is beyond my, my comprehension. This is beyond my thinking. But let me tell you something. Moses obeyed. He heard the voice of the Lord and he obeyed. And he went to the edge of the uh, Red Sea and he stretched forth his rod just like God told him to. And God did his work. See, the miracle comes from God's hands, hallelujah, from God's power. And God separated the Red Sea. The second point I want to make about miracles and receiving your miracle today is that you must have faith. You must have faith that God is able to do this. Uh, let's turn over to Romans chapter 4. You know, Abraham and Sarah are certainly, uh, they're, they're examples of miracles. Sarah's womb was dead. Abraham was, was dead. They, they had been promised a son, uh, a biological son. And, um, and here they were. Both of their bodies were incapable of, of having um, a child. Uh, but listen to what it says here, in verse, starting in verse um, 18 of chapter 4 of Romans. Who against hope believed in hope? He believed in the invisible. He could see himself playing with this child. He could see all the stars in the sky and God said, your descendants are going to be just like the stars in the sky. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. See, we go back to our first point. He heard from God. He heard God say, you're going to be the father of many nations. He even changed his name from Abram to Abraham. So shall thy seed be. In verse 19. And being not weak, he was not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving God the glory. Now we're going to go to that point in just a few moments. But he believed. God works miracles, believe and receive. I love this story. In verse 21, And being fully persuaded that what he had been promised he was able to perform. That's part of faith. Do you believe this word or do you not believe this word? I said I was going to, to share with you uh, the miracle that happened in, in my life. Uh, I was diagnosed almost 18 years ago with terminal cancer of the thyroid. was the second highest malignant thyroid. Three specialists said that I had this particular type of cancer, that, and they gave me six months to live. And that was, he, they said, hey, we're going to go in and try to get all of it out. And if we don't get all of it out, there's not even time to give you chemo. Now that was pretty heart-wrenching right there. But I, I thank the Lord for what he spoke to me. I was, uh, it was, again, it was early in the morning, one morning, and he spoke this scripture to me, Psalms 118. And it says, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I had to get up out of bed and go to my Bible and and look in Psalms 118, and sure enough, there it is. Number one, I heard from the Lord. I heard that, I number one, I was not going to die. Number two, that I was going to live. And number three, I was going to declare the works of the Lord. God works miracles. Believe 
and receive. I believed. My husband believed. We became together in agreement and praise the name of Jesus. I am standing here today. Cancer, no cancer, because when they went in to take out the cancer, they found no cancer. It had already dried up and left my body because God gave me a miracle. Why did he do that? I heard his voice and I believed and received. I believed the word of God. That's where, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And when we hear the voice of God and he gives us a scripture, then we can take that to the bank. We can believe that and just go ahead and receive our miracle. You know, there's a third point that I want to make before we pray for people and I anoint these handkerchiefs. And that is thankfulness. So the first point that I made was knowing the voice of the Lord and obeying that voice. The second was having faith, accepting our miracle. See, your mind will tell you, well, there's no way that I can get my miracle. Your carnal mind is an enemy against God, and that's why you need to hear with your spiritual inner man, you need to hear what God is saying. You need to believe Him. You know, another point about faith is in Mark chapter 11. One of my favorite scriptures, one that I cut my teeth on and, and still go back to, uh, day after day. In verse uh, 24 of Mark 11, it says, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that so simple? Just a simple childlike faith, you know, believing uh, that, that God is able to do this. Believe and receive and, and get your miracle today. You know, in Mark chapter uh, 9 and 10, it talks about that all things are possible to those who believe. That's in Mark chapter 9. And in Mark chapter 10, it says all things are possible with God. Let's read Mark chapter 10, verse 27. It says, With men it is impossible, be not with God. But it's not with God, for with God all things are possible. And then if we go back to Mark chapter 9, verse 23, uh, this is what, um, what it says in Mark chapter 9. It says, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So, believe, accept, see yourself there. See yourself healed of diabetes. See yourself healed of cancer. See yourself receiving that miracle and getting you out of that wheelchair. Some of you have been diagnosed that you will be paralyzed for the rest of your life You've been, uh, this, this person I'm talking to right now, you've had a car accident and they have said to you that you will not uh, walk again, that you will be in that wheelchair. And that is a lie from the pit of hell because I see you getting up out of that wheelchair. I see you walking in the name of Jesus. You know, we were in Honduras a couple of years ago and we were doing revival meetings there in La Ceiba, Honduras, and they, I was, I was teaching and preaching about healings and miracles, and they brought a man in a wheelchair that had never walked in his life, and his legs were like string beans. They were, they, they it was like they had no muscles or no uh, ability to get out of that wheelchair, and I, I, I had him wait until the very uh, last uh, so that we could focus and put all of our energy uh, you know into into him 
And I said, you know, to two men on either side of him, you know, to, to get him out of that wheelchair, to, to pick him up. And he was just there, and his legs were just dangly, you know, like string beans or rubber. And I began to, to pray, and, and we began to lay hands on him and let the energy of God go into him and believe God for a miracle for him. And he began to try to, to walk at first, and the, and the two people on either side of him, they were, they were, they were helping him, you know, just move those legs and then all of a sudden he just began to to take a step and he took two steps and he took three steps and and there was just a big crowd of people that were just it was just an uproar uh in that building where we were and the people were uh crying and thanking god and praising god and 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 i just give god all the praise that he is a miracle working god and he will do it for you today. He will do it for you today. We must be thankful unto him. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, To make our requests known of God and to be thankful. You know, I was sitting in my living room uh, because all the tests kept coming back about the cancer and, and they kept coming back that, that it was still there, it was still there. And so I was in my living room and I was crying before the Lord. And I said, why am I not seeing a manifestation of this? And it's so clear. The voice of the Lord said, because you have not thanked me. And I fell face down on my living room floor and I began to cry. And I began to thank the Lord uh, for what he was doing, that the cancer was dead and it was gone. And... It was. God did it. First, we have to know the voice of the Lord and obey it. Secondly, we have to faith. We have to have faith. We have to receive it and accept it. And number three, we have to be thankful for who did it. And that's the Lord God Almighty. I want to pray over these handkerchiefs before we uh, have to leave you today. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are watching you, you be, you're a believer, and, and just reach out your hand toward these handkerchiefs in Jesus' name. Lord, we are anointing these according to your word in Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, uh, that diseases uh, will have to leave people's bodies, uh, especially paralysis uh, in the limbs. Uh, Lord, right, cancers, right now I see them going and dying, hallelujah. Evil spirits having to leave, spirits of infirmity, uh, spirit, evil spirits of uh, mental disorder, uh, wherever these are laid, evil spirits will have to leave uh, in Jesus' name. And we just thank you and we give you all the praise that your energy and your glory and your power are going into these handkerchiefs. And we thank you for the results. We thank you that people will give you glory for still being a miracle-working God this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. If you would like to email us, um, it's, it's called info, I-N-F-O, at hisfountain.net. And, and just give us your address, and we'll be glad to send you uh, one of these uh, hank anointed handkerchiefs. Uh, I'm going to do that again. It's I-N-F-O, at hisfountain.net. So please, let us hear from you. And... We will be glad to send you one of these handkerchiefs. God bless you.